fortune awaits in blood and plunder. Set sail in the golden age of piracy and claim the riches of the Caribbean at beastsofwar.com. Take control of armies from the five kingdoms of Arcania and vie for the throne of the ancient king in Wrath of Kings. Master your skills on the battlefield over on beastsofwar.com. Hi folks, this is Dallas from Privateer Press and we're here at the Beast of War Studios and today we're going to talk about two brush wet blending. And two brush wet blending is a technique that we use in the studio for Privateer Press. Uh, but in addition to being a studio level technique, it's also a technique that can be used for tabletop or even display or competition quality miniatures. Um, right now on this, we're going to be working on our Eye of Truth. We've got some gold on there. And we're going to I'm going to demonstrate the two brush blending technique on him at about studio level quality. Um, the difference between the you know using it for a studio or using it for competition or tabletop would be the amount of care into the blending. Um, for tabletop, the the blend doesn't have to be perfect. It's more about getting a really uh, general uh, feel for a shadow or a highlight or a transition. Uh, for studio, I'm more worried about a good blend. And for competition, of course, I'd be caring about the perfect blends when appropriate. So let's just get started. Let's get some mop paint on this guy. I'm just going to start out with some Minoth White Base. I'm going to go ahead and fill one of my holes on my palette with Minoth White Base. So we're going to need a base coat. We might want to return to this later, so I might as well have some of this out ready to go instead of leaving my paint pot open. And that should be enough to get us through. I'm not going to paint the whole model. I'm just going to demonstrate on this uh, upper surface here. We're just going to go ahead and base coat. And of course, everybody is familiar with base coating. I'm just putting on smooth, even layer, my Minoth white base. You get a little paint up on the gold and brush it away with a damp brush. And just work your way around. That's actually why I prefer to paint Just work your way around Putting on your base coat I'll flip this guy up a little bit Just to get into This area Don't try to overwork anything. What I mean by that, don't just keep pushing paint onto a surface. Let it dry before going to the next layer. There we go. All right, that's one layer on. We'll just wait for that to dry to do our second coat. With our first layer dry, we can now add a second layer of base color. Once again, just about smooth. Oop. A little too wet. Remember, smooth, even coats. Two or three light coats get a much better effect than one big heavy coat. Put this guy up.
our second layer. I'm going to go ahead and put on a third. Just getting some paint off. Getting a tip on my brush by twisting it. Just painting in that third coat. With our mid-mouth white base applied in three smooth, even coats, we have a great foundation to begin building up our layers and creating a transition of color. As soon as this is dry, we'll get started on that. Okay, we can start shading. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with Crixbane Highlight. We're gonna start by applying some paint to this lower surface, and then using a second brush, a damp second brush, to go back and forth until we grab the edge of it, of the paint, and then bring it up and over. And what this does is allow transition to occur in the paint. So let's start with our Crixbane highlight and get some of that out. The Formula P3 paint line is specially formulated for this technique. Each paint has an undertone to it or a secondary color. And when you spread it out, that secondary color gets unlocked. So what you get is a vast number of colors happening on a very small surface. So by blending it up, doing another blend, you just get an exponential number of uh, color gradients and variations. This makes the model look more realistic, but with a cartoon twist. It gives it that pop. We're going to start with our Crixbane bait highlight. I'm going to apply some to this bottom corner. Go back and forth. And then bring it up. Now we can put some shadow on this side. go. And just wait for this to dry. I'm going to do one more quick blend of the Crixbane highlight on this one side just to give it a, a smoother coat. Try to even out that blend. And just make sure it's down in the deepest parts here. All right, our second shade is going to be Bastion Gray. We don't want this to go up as far as the first shade, and, but we want to start at the bottom and blend it, and then that way we get a, an area that has a lot of color variation. You don't want to water this down, not just a little bit, just to, just enough on the tip of the brush to add to it to loosen it up, not make it watery. You want you want your paint kind of uh, sticky for two brush blending. It needs to stay in the needs to stay in the spot. I'll just paint that down the recess. Come in with bring it up and over. I'm 
some on this side. Just coming in and grabbing that edge and bringing it up. In this deep area. Now we just need to work a final shade of thermal green. And like with any white, you want the thorn, you want your final shade to be in just the just the deepest recesses. I use it more like a dark line than anything else. Very rarely do I blend this final shade on a white color up. It's primarily just to define edges and, and dark line. So we'll take our thermal green. You won't need much. There we go. And we're just going to put this deepest parts. Like a dark line. This area back here is so dark. I want to put a little bit of a blend in there. It's not going to hurt. Okay, we've got our base coat, three layers of shade. Now it's time to highlight. For this, I'm going to go straight to pure mid off white highlight and do a very thin glaze or a very thin blend, almost glazing over the upper surface. And then I'll go back and do a second one to really bring it up. If you're not feeling confident with using the pure white, try mixing it in with some mineral white base and do a layer of that and then go into your pure mineral white highlight. So, get it. Mineral white highlight. Switch to clear water for this. Don't want to contaminate it. Don't want to get too wet. Kind of got a little too wet there. Better. Remember, you want it sticky. All right. Seems dry. Let's get to work. I'm going to put a little bit right up here on this edge. Blend that down. And as you can see, I can push in there and make a tight edge. And then I'll blend it out and make it a little bit better later. Kind of working in stages. Same on this side. Push it up to make that tight point. And create that gradient down. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and paint his eye in. Got a little bit of mid off white highlight on that cowl. That's okay. I can use my second brush and blend it out. 
And then that way later on I can add a glaze to it and make it look like it's a little bit of that a glow reflecting on the metal. A little bit of highlight right here. All right, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and darken in everything around him. Tidy up. And we can reclaim our gold. I'm going to reclaim with a little Rulik and solid. We got a little paint up on there. Okay. And that's your fundamentals of two brush wet blending, a technique designed for speed and accuracy and to achieve awesome transitions on your models. Remember, a little patience, practice, perseverance goes a long way. Remember to check our links below. Until next time, happy painting. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.